So the next section, we wanted to focus on some cosmetic procedures and complications related to them. Um, our first speaker is Dr. Raviv, speaking on ocular complications of cosmetic iris implants. Thank you very much, and thanks for having me. Uh, I want to show uh, a show of hands. If anyone here has seen a patient with cosmetic iris implants implanted elsewhere, wow, I'm seeing a lot of hands here. Uh, and the first thing we, of course, have to make clear, and this is not for this audience, but more for the, the, the public, is the two different types of implants. Of course, we have the medical human optics, which is an example on the left, and this is a cosmetic new color iris on the right. And what you can see is the positioning. In fact, the case on the left is a is a human optics used to salvage a case of iris atrophy after a cosmetic one, uh, and it's placed either in the sulcus or the bag. So what are the cosmetic brands out there? Actually, there's only two. The first original one was uh, developed by Dr. Khan in Panama, New Color Iris. About 700 are estimated to be implanted between 2006 and 2010, and we saw a lot of these in New York. Uh, and more recently, that IP was transferred to Bright Ocular, although there's debate about whether it's different. They changed a little bit of it. And that's now the current outside the U.S. brand that's used. And you can see the marketing is uh, it's pretty aggressive. There's some volume here. Can we put the volume of the video? on me, and I feel a lot of people will notice, and a lot of people will actually like the difference. This is before and after, and this is a famous actor, or somewhat famous on the internet. Um, so I finally got the surgery. It was... Uh, a great process, like, it was way easier than I thought it was going to be. So as you can see, this is heavily marketed. This is very savvy, presented on the Internet. And uh, on their website, there's a lot of misleading information about FDA-approved material, uh, United States patent studies. Of course, there are no studies. It is silicone. And the reality is that this causes just horrific damage, as we said, many of you have probably seen in the room, and we'll, I'll show it today. Uh, the problem and what we need to do is that this marketing is not really uh, being rebutted by any official organizations. And there's really no condemnation by ASCRS or ESCRS, and I think that's something we need to do uh, to combat what the lay press considers just a controversial procedure, not one that should never be done. There's two case series reports. I was involved in the first one in 2012 with the new color iris implant, and now a recent one was published with the bright ocular back in 2015. And what basically these studies showed is that there's severe and irreversible complications. This is not a reversible procedure, it's just a removable implant. Uh, but uniformly there was according to the compensation, uveitis, glaucoma, iris atrophy, and cataracts. And you can see some of the damage here uh, when these are left in place. You could see uh, an anterior uh, uh, OCT there showing the placement of these things. The problem with these implants is we cannot size them and there are anterior chamber lenses that basically touch the angle 360 degrees uh, and cause severe damage. One of the most disheartening, and I've seen this personally, many of you has, and even in the study on bright ocular, most of the patients refuse to have these taken out. Four of 12 in this case series says please don't remove them and they were basically on eye drops and uh, didn't want to remove. So here's a patient that presented to us and usually their chief complaint is I've run out of drops or my doctor in, in northern Africa told me to see an eye doctor or my vision's blurry. Usually they want to keep the implants and they're on multiple steroid and glaucoma drops already. What I would recommend after seeing a few of these is do not delay and do not, do not uh, hesitate to tell the patient that this is extremely dangerous. The first sign of iritis, high IOP, pupil ovalization, corner of the compensation, early, early signs should be treated rapidly because this can progress very, very rapidly to frank decompensation, where, of course, they need immediate explantation. Uh, when it does get to this point, or at any point, I usually recommend just removing these implants primarily, quieting the eye down, and then reevaluating for further surgery. In the clinical uh, studies and the literature, most of these, greater than half, required a secondary or tertiary procedure, including phaco, DSEC, glaucoma surgery, iris repair. And, and these, this is a patient three months post-op, uh, some of them from far look pretty good, and they're all on steroids. They've been told that the steroid drops after six months, their eyes will get better, so a lot of them are in disbelief. So how do we take these out? Uh, this is something that we are faced with a fake patient, uh, and maybe some of them are getting it three months, and we tell them to take it out, we want to cause no problems. There have been some case reports here of most of them talk about slicing and cutting this into multiple pieces and removing it, but I did a few, and what we've kind of got it down to is just a one cut removal technique and there's even a no cut removal technique but I like the one cut because I find it to be the least traumatic and basically we're going to make one or two paracentesis really nearly one 
Yeah, first we put myocol in the eye, and you'll see that the, uh, re the real iris comes down underneath. And there's, of course, dispersive viscoelastic. You want to use a 23 gauge uh, end grasping forceps or 25 gauge. Always come across from your wound. And what I do is give it one radial cut, trying not to, of course, touch the endothelium or the lens. And usually with one snip, you can then put some more viscoelastic in and remove this in one fell swoop pretty atraumatically uh, with another, with the same 23 gauge micro graspers. The, you want to be in the eye as little as possible, of course, and I've even thought, and probably what we can do better than this is if we can put uh, like a Malugian ring type uh, injector and just grab it into that tube before just pulling it out. Here I'm putting in some more viscote and you can pull it out. You can actually grab it and pull the whole thing out, but it just folds up too much into the wound. And all these have six little foot plates. This is a new color iris. The broad ocular is no different. Some of them have been hand cut to be smaller. There's man-made uh, iridotomy, but they really, unfortunately, uh, cannot be sized properly. And although I'm all for cosmetic uh, treatments, and I think you know the human optics one is really amazing, and hopefully get it FDA approved, but these cosmetic ones have not been studies. So in conclusion, these are unapproved, unstudied cosmetic iris implants, and they're truly a public safety hazard. You wouldn't know that by looking online or reading the lay press or the blogs. Uh, a certain uh, rapper's wife went over and had this done, and now many rappers are coming in. Most of them have even seen some of us in the United States and asked for a preoperative exam before going. Uh, that's what they're instructed to do. I believe that ophthalmic societies need to officially condemn these implants. We need to put a statement down there and educate the public on the dangers. And if we do see these patients, prompt action to remove them is warranted. Thank you very much.